This video is for help with creating a drawing sheet for the um, passenger insert. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is make sure you've got your insert built. Doesn't matter if it was a five star or a five point star or a six point star. I'm going to go to new. I'm going to choose the RH drawing sheet. Hopefully you have that installed. Create. This part is going to have a lot of dimensions on it, especially on the front view, but it's not going to be as complex as um, the car body was with extra views. So caps lock, everything's all caps here. So the part name, passenger insert. Student name and period. So making sure everything is correct down here at the bottom in our title block. So go to base. And then we want to select a little file magnifying glass and if you've set up a project folder, they should all be right here. If not, you may have to dig around somewhere on your desktop or in your, um, in your documents folder. So I'm going to go ahead and do the passenger insert for the five point, just because it's the first one on the list. Open it up. And that is the front view. So front view always goes in the lower left. And then we have a top view. We have an isometric view. And we have a right side view. Now, because the rear of it has been shelled out, I am going to have an extra view. I'm going to have a back view. And that's not something that we've done much of. So I'm going to show you how to place um, a random view. Because I don't, I don't need to go through and do other parts. I just need to flip this around to the back so I can see it. And then I'll place it probably right here. So go ahead and click OK. Knowing already that I'm probably going to slide this one over. So I'm going to grab it by the little red dotted box on the outside and slide it over just a hair. This one needs to be shaded. So hover until you get the red dotted box and then right click, edit view, and then click shade. OK. There, we see that it's green. This one is the one I'm going to make a... I'm, I'm actually just going to go to base again. And I'm going to select the same part. And this time, though, that's the front. I'm going to flip it around to the back. Now, it may not look any different to you. But when we zoom, there's a difference. So that's all I'm going to have. So click OK. And so here we see that there is a dotted line around all the parts. That dotted line is hidden. If we go here and zoom in, we'll notice there's two lines because from the back view, we are looking at the shell. And the shell was a 0.01. So that's how thick this little wall is right here between these two lines. It left a 0.01 thickness shell. I'm going to move that up just a hair. Grab that and bring that up. I'm just using my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. All right, so I need to place dimensions. My dimensions are going to need to be about these shapes, but also how far away those shapes are from the outside edge of the part. Plus, I need overall dimensions for the part. So it might get a little cluttered. But because I'm using a back view and a front view, and they're basically the same, I can put some of my shape dimensions on the back view if it gets too cluttered. I can spread them out just a little bit. Likewise, I could put the total width here if I wanted to, but we like to put most of the dimensions on this front view. So click Annotate, and then click Dimension. Let's go ahead and get some overall dimensions here. So from from 
that's not what I want. I want this. So I can put it here. And then I want to go click here on the outside left and click here on the outside right. Okay, those are my overall dimensions. Now I can dimension the uh, fillet. I have to, you know what, I think I'm going to do the fillet over here so it doesn't cross any of these lines. So make sure when you do the fillet, you don't get the green dot. We don't want the green dot. We just want the outside edge. Yeah, there we go. Up here, we just want the thickness. 0.3. That's all we need there. Now, that's basically the block. We now need to... Uh, do a couple of things. We need to do the shell on the back side, but we also need to dimension the different shapes. So when we dimension the shapes, you can click on the circle, but notice we have an outside and an inside. So we want to click on the one like that. So just click on the circle. Notice the symbol it gives me. That's a diameter symbol. That circle with a slash through it. I don't know if you've seen that yet, but that's the diameter symbol. And then we want to click the size of this square. So I'm just going to grab that side and bring it up. Click OK. Now, I don't know it's a square technically. So if you hit Escape, and we'll grab this number and drag it way out. And then hit Dimension again. Because they don't tell you it's a square, maybe we should dimension it. And then what that does is that allows us to dimension from here to the outside edge. And that was that 0 0.05 we had to do a lot of. And now that, that staggers on top of it. So I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to try and grab that 0.05 and flip it up like that. So I've created a chain dimension here to show that this square is 0.05 away from the top edge. I'm going to do the same thing on the triangle here at the bottom. I'm going to dimension from the outside edge to the corner of the triangle. It's 0.5 also. 0.05 rather. And then I don't know that I'll be able to do it here. We'll try. From there to there. Yeah, okay, let me. Now, I didn't really do anything special with the star, but you could, if you wanted to, go ahead and just say, well, that star point is 0.12 away. I didn't really set that necessarily, but it's part of fully dimensioning. Now, we've got the, the height. We now need the width. So, I'm going to slide this, slide this number out a little bit. Actually, I think I'm going to flip it up to there. Then I'm going to grab this and I'm going to slide it up. Grab the elbow, slide it up like that. Grab that, flip it up. There we go. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm now going to do this. So what this is doing is it's saying from the center of the circle to the outside edge is 0.49. Now because, notice there's no center mark in the circle, so I need to put one. So here's the center mark tool. Click on center mark, then click on the center of the circle, and it gives you these big crosshairs looking thing. And that tells you there's the center of the circle. I need to do the same thing here. All right. Well, I've dimensioned everything about the circle, diameter and its X and Y. I've dimensioned almost everything about the square. I need to go back, click on dimension, and I need to dimension how far away this square is from the front side of the part to there, like that. Now, the, the smaller dimension should go inside, so I'm going to hit Escape. I'm going to drag this up a little bit. And I'm going to drag this one down a little bit. You know, that two, and drag that two down, like that. Okay. 
really wish this was a little bit further away, so let's pull that away. You can bend that a little bit, I guess. I'd prefer it, though, to be straight. There we go. That's what I'd prefer. Just to kind of give me some clarity between the numbers. So if I come over here, maybe I'm going to put the rest of the dimensions. Like this triangle, I'm going to put the dimensions over here. So for the triangle, we dimensioned. We already did the bottom, but we didn't do the front point from the edge. and the star. So how do we determine what the dimensions are of the star? Well, the way I constructed it, it doesn't really give me true dimensions. So what I can do though is for each, I don't know if it'll let me dimension from point to point. Well it does, but I wish it was this. This is what we want from point to point. We want this diagonal. That's what we really want. To see the distance from point to point. That's what we want. Because if we remember that point, there was a side here. So really when I had a pentagon, each side of the pentagon was 0.37. So that's really giving us the best dimension we can hope for. Let's see if it'll let me move it out just a little bit. I just want to get it away. There we go. That's what I want to do. There. That's probably the best I can hope for. For the star. Actually, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to put all the star measurements over here. So we're going to dimension this bottom point to the outside. This point one zero. And this point here to the outside. So, I've dimensioned everything about the part. All of the different shapes have their dimensions. Um, the only thing I'm missing now is shell. So you'll notice under annotations, there isn't anything about shells. So what I need to do, I probably should do this anyway, uh, because I have a back and a front and they may not recognize the difference. I'm going to text. So I'm going to label. I'm going to label this view here as back. It's going to be all caps. Back view. And so this, hit escape, this is the back view. And I just want to make sure that's clear. I also want to make sure that there's a note somewhere on here. Here, let's do this. Let's dimension. Whoops. Let's dimension the thickness from here to here. That's 0.01. And now I'm going to type in the word shell. Click OK. So that is now noted that this number is a shell. The thickness should be shelled. So this tells the people that are reading it and or the people that are creating things uh, that I use the shell feature, the shell tool in the modeling software. And that's it. You do want to make sure this is called the back view and you want to make sure we use 0.01 shell. And then the person knows what a shell is. It knows all of these thicknesses then are 0.01. Okay, so that's what your drawing sheet should look like. Once you've completed it, you want to save your drawing sheet. It's going to pop up, passenger insert, insert, and it's going to save it as an IDW file. Just click save. Then you're going to go back to file, export. Export PDF. It's the PDF that you're going to upload to Canvas. And just click save. And that's it for this video.